This week, Sean details why there is not a new episode breaking down the Spider-Man universe. And along the way, we ask, why, oh why, do I trust Audacity? (laughs) Can technology failures ever cause any more stress than they already do? And I guess finally, where will we go from here? This is force-fed sci-fi. Hey, by the sound of my voice, you probably hear... I don't sound too good. <coughs> Excuse me. Actually, uh, I am just getting over a little bit of a sicky spell. Uh, I didn't apparently have COVID. Got a negative test, but um, I have been down and out since uh, Tuesday. I started feeling a little... like On Monday, I was feeling a little weird, but then Tuesday, I felt like hot garbage. And then it just like kept steamrolling into Wednesday, where I was like down and out bad and then Thursday was pretty good and then uh yesterday felt pretty fighting shape and today it's just like getting rid of the little sniffles and coughs and just a little bit of my voice so this froggy voice that you hear now is uh enjoy it because it's about all you're gonna get of it um so (laughs) a little check-in uh surprise there's no episode (laughs) We were going to drop a Spider-Man episode, and um, <clears throat> we recorded it last Sunday, but the uh, the audio, the mixer um, that we use at Chris's, it just, uh, it does this thing, and it's been doing it since, like, we started recording almost three years ago. Um, it gets really, like, finicky, like, especially, like, my audio, for some reason, uh, it gets really... Uh, Staticky, and I know some of the episodes you probably heard it. I've tried to use on Audacity or now Audio Tonic. It's like a um, it's a noise reduction, and so you it, to try and like remedy the situation. So that's why in some of our episodes, like the audio will like, sound a little weird or like I'm underwater. Um, but for this one, I just couldn't do it because um, it just wasn't working. It wasn't like with the Matrix because. How we recorded it at Chris, like Jeremy's got his own mic that's a USB that he plugs into mine, and then I use the mixer, uh, my mic, which is a condenser mic, with Chris's condenser mic at the mixer with his computer, and um, it just, like Jeremy's picked up, his mic was picking up my mic, so it was just like I couldn't, I couldn't like get the popping like I did for the Matrix, so I couldn't like edit it out. It just sounded like hot garbage, and um, our conversation just there was just too much, man. Like we talked for like an hour and a half, almost hour forty five, and like if I it was a lot of my audio, like God, like sixty five percent of it was just like poppy, poppy, staticky, and Jeremy's mic was kind of a little off too. So I was just like, dude, I told him, I'm like, you know. I can edit it out, but it's going to be a really short episode that's not going to be as coherent. We're going to lose a lot of good content. So we decided we'll just re-record it. So instead, I'm just doing this little check-in with you. But um, all that fun business, uh, we yeah, Spider-Man will come out your way. So instead, we're just going to record Snowpiercer next week. Today, Saturday the 15th, so next week, Thursday, we'll record Snowpiercer, and I'll release that episode probably that Saturday, um, or one of the days, because I got drill so and a concert, so I don't know, we'll figure it out um, when we can do it, and uh, we'll get it done, so more content towards you guys. Still trying to figure out uh, and get time to like do streaming and everything, I'm so close, like because I'm a social person, so I'm usually busy, so I am never, like, have time, or I could make time to do extra stuff, so I have a couple buddies on so- that know social media and uh, streaming, so I'm going to link up with them sometime soon, maybe end of January, beginning of February, and get it all taken care of to, like, where I can uh, get it all squared away, at least so, like, I can stream, do some Facebook Live or IG stuff, so you guys can see the face while we talk. Outside of that, um, what's some fun news going on? Uh, Bowls 
if you're from the Chicagoland area, Bulls just dropped two in a row, which is kind of a bummer for fans because um, they lost to Brooklyn and the Warriors, who were like kind of the top teams. Brooklyn is number two in their conference, and so we wanted to see how they would do against Chicago, but Chicago kind of got spanked by Brooklyn, um, which is a real big bummer. Um, but at the same token, I called it at the beginning of the year. I said, you know, they're good, but I feel like they're a bench or two player short from being like that team that's going to beat Brooklyn because Brooklyn has, you know, James Harden, Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Durant. Now that Kyrie Irving is playing away games and now they're negotiating so that he can play at home, I think it's a matter of time before they just have so much talent. But at the same token, if the Bulls center can go back to like find a shooting stroke and just go back to scoring 21, 22, 23 points a game. I think they might hold a chance against them, but still, I think I still think they're like a one bench player short, but they lost to the Warriors, which is a bummer because Warriors are kind of older and they still spanked them. So like they spanked them bad and Levine went out with a knee injury, which is terrifying. Same thing with Lonzo. So it's like, ah, here we go. Because if you're a Bulls fan, like I've been the past 10 years, you know, like their trainers suck. So they always get injured. Someone always gets freaking injured on that team. But luckily, the MRI came back, and um, they said that it's no structural damage for Levine, at least. Um, so hopefully, I mean, they're going to nurse it, though, because they want him to resign, and he's like their baby. So I'm sure he'll miss like a good five, six, seven, eight games to like rehab in a couple of weeks, which is fine. You know, I think I still think they're going to be a solid number two or number three team. I don't know if they're going to go all the way. I personally think they might lose in the conference finals but who knows they may you know their center may find his touch anyone anything could happen in the nba <clears throat> so we'll see i'll say that bear season is done few chicago fans surprise surprise man Nagy got fired same thing with pace who would have thought that they should have been fired a season ago and it's funny because now i read an article about how like Nagy was just like treating mitch Trubis- trubisky their former quarterback like garbage and i'm like oh Really? <laughs> like, he totally ghosted him on a meeting where Trubisky, like, made notes about how to get better. And I've always said that. Like, Mitch wasn't a terrible quarterback. I thought he was a pretty good athletic guy. He wasn't – he he didn't have, like, the raw talent like Justin Fields, but he was still good. And he couldn't, like, throw throw, but he was still good. It's just Nagy – I don't know. I just – I was never a big fan. I thought he got lucky that first year because he was fresh. But after that, it seemed like he just didn't have it. And they made such questionable pace, made such questionable signings all the time, especially for Nick Foles. And just, it just doesn't make sense, you know, like both of them. So I'm glad they're gone. I don't know. Everyone, yeah, it's going to take a while. It's it's like the Bulls. It took them like, gosh, after 15 was like their last good year chance to make it to the uh, finals. It's what? One, two, three, four, five, damn near six years for them to rebuild. So Bears, it's probably going to take time too. Same thing with Cubs. Uh, what else? Um, Media-wise, I've really only been revisiting Bob's Burgers and Archer. Nothing movie-esque. Um, I don't know. I've just been, you know, busy. Um, I haven't been paying too much attention, though I did see Michael Keaton won a Golden Globe, which is awesome because I love Michael Keaton. And I also saw, oh, the movie uh, Nightmare Alley with uh, Bradley Cooper, by uh, directed by Guillermo del Toro. I'm a big fan of him. I always love, I will always say it, Pan's Lambreth is one of my favorite films. Um, I thought, you know, fantastic. And so he he's cool. Like, to me, he's just such an innovative director. He always has great themes in his movies and interesting diverse cast with unique costumes special effects and practical effects and he's just really like one of a kind director and it's like the things that make movies exciting to me you know and i don't mean to poo poo marvel films i think marvel films are great you know they're they're you know they're for kids or for parents i mean they're 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 designed to make money they're a great slice of pop culture and um, that's their job to entertain. I know I was talking to my mother about it and we we're talking about Spider-Man and she was like, you know, it, it, I didn't see Spider-Man hoping to like get this <laughs> like sage wisdom about like themes or life lessons. She's like, no, I just want to be entertained. 
and I was. And that's kind of like my new approach to Marvel films. I'm not... I don't look at them anymore as like these works of art. <laughs> they're more like <coughs> they're they're more like I don't know, like just theme park rides, like things to entertain. I dare I say Star Wars films, but that's just so sad. Um so it's you know, it is what it is. Um I know my favorite movies. I really like movies like Nightmare Alley where it's like dark brooding uh, themes where you like really walk away from the theater with like things you think about. Like with Nightmare Alley, it was about this carnies and this dude that um, he's not a good person. He's a horrible person and he falls into alcoholism and just gains the world but loses it all and becomes like the scum of the earth. And... um, like really you see the dis like he dissolves and you really see the breakdown of a man um and i like that because it makes me analyze my life and myself as a person and see like how i'm doing and um i i get moved you know i'm um it makes me feel things and be introspective and i really like that um i know for me like television is more like, that's why I like Bob's Burgers and Archer. It's like funny things, but things I don't have to like think about, like Blacklist or anything. Um, whereas movies, they kind of remind me of like plays where I try to really get enamored and engrossed in them and take something away for the story. Oh, uh, what else though? But still, that's neither here nor there. I will still watch uh, Marvel films because we <laughs> two of my podcast hosts <laughs> love them, so I have to be on this journey, <laughs> even if I want to or not. I uh, oh yeah, another cool thing is um, I finished. Uh, I finally watched The Mandalorian, uh, both seasons. <laughs> um, really un- unexpected. Um, you know, I <clears throat> I really hadn't had any interest in doing it in a while or at all to see the Mandalorian. Cause to be honest, and you probably, if you listen to me and my brother's breakdown of star Wars and then uh, in 2019, when we did the new series suite, I'm just like, so it's just star Wars to me. is just like such a letdown. Um, and that's kind of like why with Marvel and just Disney in general, I'm just kind of like trying to distance myself. Cause It's just like things like Star Wars, like as a kid in the 90s, I loved watching them. They were just fun, goofy and great characters, great stories. And and in the 2000s with George, yeah, it was more about toys and the epic battle sequences. And I didn't really care about the dialogue as a kid. I really just wanted to see the lightsaber battles and the war scenes. And to me, like that's, I guess, why part of me doesn't really care for like Star Wars or the Marvel stuff because that's basically what it feels like to me. Like it's it's just so heavily focused on like battles and um, selling toys and memes and you know so trying to be like part of pop culture instead of like creating art and having a statement. Whereas like the first three in the seventies and eighties really were about creating new. And even the prequels, I could say George like tried he tried to create something new. But the new films were just such a letdown. They just, they had everything and they just spit in his face, George's face with his, you know, treatments and they tried, but they had no plan. And so I really just kind of got depressed by the new movies and didn't really want to see them. I I, I really just don't want to see anything Star Wars ever again. And I'm okay with that if I never see him again, because it's like, it's just like, I just needed a break, you know, like I'm, ugh. so I decided with the urging of my brother and to give it a shot. And I, I said, all right, I'm going to live life on life's terms. I'm not going to have any judgment. I'm just going to go into this and watch it. And so I did. I watched the first season of Mandalorian and then followed by the second season because I was sick in bed for like two days where I barely did anything except sleep, drink tea and go to the bathroom. <laughs> I lost like eight pounds. And um, I was really uh, impressed. I, I really was. Um, it, I was really impressed by the series. Um, I think I liked the first season better than the second. But it was like the whole idea of it was a simple story. Get Grogu 
to the Jedi. You know, I mean, the first season was like, <laughs> dude was supposed to like, you know, get Grogu, sell him off. All right, he saves him. Now he's on the run trying to figure out what to do with the kid and where to hide. And um, to me, that was just so simple. And it was like things happened to them. And yeah, some episodes felt like they were filler, but it kind of reminded me of um, like a Bob's Burgers thing. Like you don't have to watch Bob's Burgers in sequential order to understand like what's going on. You know, it's like um, it's like a Pasadic, you know, it, it reminded me of Star Trek in a way, the old Star Trek. And I like that. It, it was fun. Unique characters and uh, same thing with season two, though season two was a little bit more narrative driven, I felt like. And um, and they did do, though, a lot. I feel like there was a lot of fan service, though, in like both seasons. Like some things did piss me off. Like they kept going back to Tatooine where I'm like, dude, there's nothing in Tatooine. Go explore something else like the stormtrooper saying the same stupid phrases like i mean it's just like come on like that does not make star wars <laughs> that's never made star wars like that's like the nitpicky stuff that like we did we found out later with the internet but it's like no people like in the 80s and 90s we weren't like quoting Ugh, you know it's like no tell a story and they did it and so so i I wasn't too mad about that stuff, but it was just like, it's like, dude, you're, you're, it's such a good series, but I'm like, man, you could take it to the next level. You just leave all that garbage behind and just continue to tell a story and stop being so self-referential. Like, it's not worth it. I, to me, that's like cheap tricks. It's like jump scares in a horror film. It's like, nah, no, we don't need this. Um, the big thing, you know, the big reveal at season two with uh, Luke um to me i know that's kind of like dicey a lot of people loved it i personally didn't um it was two things it was very fan servicey to me and um also a bit uncanny valley i understand with like marvel they were able to de-age and then they've made like the irishman um but having luke come back I just felt like it took from the story, like it sucked the conflict out. And I also felt um, the CGI just wasn't that great. <laughs> the CGI wasn't that great, in my opinion. It wasn't Luke, uh, Mark Hamill voicing Luke. And um, and I understand like why the director did it. He's a fan. Half of the, the series is for fans, and um, they want to kind of right the ship from like The Last Jedi, how they treated Mark Hamill and Luke Skywalker, the character. So I understand why. But I just felt like the story didn't require it. And um, I just wish like these big companies would, just like Disney would let things die. I really do. Because, I mean, it's it's like these big characters that they just keep resurrecting. Like you would never see them resurrect the Joker, like Heath Ledger's Joker, right? You'd never see them do that. Um, so why are they doing that with like Luke Skywalker? Why are they doing that with Han Solo? Like, why are they doing that? Um, I get it. It makes money. It's a tribute to fans. But for me, it's just, I'm a fan. Well, I used to be a fan. <laughs> I don't know anymore when you only like a couple of the movies, but it's just, I let it go. You know, like his story is done. They missed out in the 80s and 90s. They could have told stories about Luke Skywalker, but they didn't. And, you know, that's kind of, that's like the part of like father time. It's like why Robin Williams didn't, doesn't want people to use his likeness for another, I think like 10 years he had it in his will. Like you just let these characters die. But, you know, that is what it is. <laughs> and that's what we were dealt with. Um, in my opinion, I loved the series. I thought Mandalorian season one and two was wonderful. I felt the finale in episode eight at the end of the first season was much more impactful um, emotionally, you know, because it had the arc with Mando being saved by the robot and then him, um, you know, actually being okay with him. And then he ends up, the robot sacrifices itself for the greater good of the people to continue on and and Mando doesn't want him to leave and um he's sad and then they have that beautiful moment where the robot's like you know you don't have to be sad I was never alive you know it's not gonna hurt I'm you know 
was never alive, so I can't die. And and while that is really sad, um, it's just it's like a wonderful thing because you get to see like that emotion with Mando and how he grew, and that's cool. And that's what I look for in these characters. And I felt at the end of the second season, Luke kind of took that away. Like it didn't. Ma- the point was that Grogu, him finally meeting, like giving him up taking off the helmet so Grogu can touch his face and like finally have eyes on each other and like have that beautiful moment. That's what it was all about. And um, so, I don't know. I, I, it's still a wonderful series. And um, while the fan service, like I said, does boggle it down for me, it still is wonderful. And I probably, I, I don't know if I would rewatch it just because I'm, <laughs> I don't know. But I, I might. Um, it's, it's really good in my opinion, uh, despite its faults. So there's that. What else? I started playing a video game from oh, from 2018 called Octopath Traveler that's been pretty cool. It's like a retro throwback to the 90s turn-based Final Fantasy-esque games. Or if you played Sega Genesis Shining Force, you know who you are if you like that game. You can also get that on your phone. Many hours playing that game when I was a kid. Um, and yeah. And so outside of that, musically, I've been jamming out to some South African house music, which has been bomb, Um, low key. I don't know what they're saying, but it has been bomb, and I highly recommend it. If you know, like, Black Coffee, he's kind of-esque. But, like, this stuff is is rocking to me. (laughs) It's rocking, bro. Um, But it's good, and I highly recommend checking it out. If you like house music, I think it's going to be lit. I think in the next 10 years, hopefully this music catches on. Um, The dude that I've been rocking out to, his name is uh, A-Y-M-O-S. So Imos and his album is Y-I-M-I-L-O. So Yimilo. And another dude that I um, was really checking out, um, he's Mas Music. And so he spells it M-A-S space m-u-s-i-q and then the album is m-a-m-b-i-s-s so mambista another great album super like south african but like it's it's got the beats and you jam out great lyric like it's chill man it's something to vibe so i've been vibing out to that stuff and it's cool to like listen to music something that you don't even understand sometimes but that you can still like vibe with other cultures and um i don't know just enjoy so, highly recommend that, stepping out of the comfort zone and trying something new. Um, yeah, so otherwise, that's been me. So, we're going to record Snowpiercer next week. I'm not going to give you any uh, hints as to what I think about the film because I want to leave that for the review. As for Spider-Man, <coughs> with my disdain of Marvel from past reviews, you probably know. But, I, but I'll leave some up to the uh, discussion. Because it wasn't all bad, on my opinion. So we'll re-record that and uh, get on with it. Probably going to do another episode with my brother. So for you that hated them, sorry. And for you that enjoyed them, check it out. We'll figure out, probably talk about some anime or something. Something oriented sci-fi. So appreciate you guys for, if you've lasted this long, a long check-in. But I'm just, you know, filling space for a good uh, episode. Yeah. Appreciate you. Thank you for coming. If you've stuck it through this long, um, always appreciative. Check us out on Instagram, Force Fed Sci Fi. We're on Facebook, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, pretty much any type of service that you utilize to listen to your podcast, YouTube, what have you. Check us out. Um, we're there. Give us a like, subscribe. Send us an email at uh, forcefitsci-fi at gmail.com. We would appreciate it. And go to our website, www.forcefitsci-fi.com. Likes, anything, share. We appreciate y'all. Um, and send us a holler because um, we'd love to review whatever movies you think are cool too. So for all of us, the Force Fit Sci-Fi team, this is Sean, and I'm signing off. Have a great 2022. Thanks.